In this lesson, we are going to discuss DNA replication. At the end of this video lesson, you should be able to identify the enzymes and processes involved in DNA replication and differentiate between the leading and lagging strands. Cells do not immediately divide during the cell cycle. They undergo three important events first before actually dividing. Cells need to grow to prepare the other organelles for the division process. This happens during the GAP1 or G1 phase. For the daughter cells to be exactly the same with the parent cell, the cells need to duplicate the DNA in their nuclei during the synthesis or S phase. Cells will undergo another checkpoint in GAP2 or G2 phase to check for any damages during the DNA replication. If these three steps go smoothly, that will be the only time in which the mitotic phase will proceed. In this lesson, we're going to focus on the S phase of the cell cycle in which the genetic material is replicated for cell division. DNA replication is the process wherein DNA molecules are duplicated before cell division and passed on to each daughter cell. DNA replication has three general steps. First is the initiation step. During initiation, the double helix is unzipped by an enzyme called helicase. This is to unwind the helix and open the strand. Looking closely at the nucleotide level, this is how helicase behaves. The helicase then creates a structure known as the replication bubble. This bubble has two Y-shaped structures that can be recognized from both sides of the bubble and are called replication forks. These forks shift in the opposite direction as the helicase unwinds the DNA, making the replication bubble wider. A special set of proteins called the single-stranded binding proteins or SSBP attaches to each strand to keep them from recoiling. Another enzyme called the topo isomerase helps in the unwinding of the DNA strand and adjusts the size of the replication bubble as it grows bigger. Now that the DNA is open, it is ready for the second step which is elongation. The replication of a DNA molecule occurs at several locations called origins of replication, with short pieces of DNA containing a particular sequence of nucleotides. The DNA strand will not be able to have a copy without a template on the forming strand. It needs a short nucleotide chain known as primers bound to the beginning nucleotides in the replication fork by enzymes known as primases. This enzyme primes the elongation by supplying an RNA primer that is normally between 5 to 10 nucleotides. Remember that the two strands of DNA are anti-parallel, meaning if the parallel strand here is 5 to 3 prime, the daughter strand should be 3 prime to 5 prime. Elongation will only occur from the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. This means that nucleotides will only be added wherever there is a free 3 prime hydroxyl end. This will be done by the enzyme DNA polymerase 3. Remember that in DNA base pairing, adenine pairs with thymine and vice versa, and guanine pairs with cytosine and vice versa. In the other strand, the primase also simultaneously adds RNA primers to start elongation. Take note that this happens together with the previous strand. During elongation, the two strands are synthesized differently. Since the 3' hydroxyl end is away from the replication fork, this strand will not be the same with the previous strand. This would actually be replicated discontinuously by the help of several primers placed along the forming daughter strand. It would run from 5' prime to 3'. Prime. Since the 3' prime hydroxyl end is away from the replication fork, this strand will not be the same with the previous strand. This would actually be replicated discontinuously by the help of the several primers placed along the forming daughter strand. Only when there is an available 3' prime hydroxyl end will there be an actual elongation in this strand. Since the orientation is reversed in this strand, the DNA polymerase has to dissolve from the finished segment and reassemble itself to the newly exposed fragment. The complementary strand that is continuously synthesized in the 5' to 3' direction is called the leading strand. Leading strand is synthesized using the 5' to 3' parent strand. On the other hand, 
the complementary strand that is discontinuously synthesized via short fragments is the lagging strand. This lagging strand uses the 3' to 5' parent DNA strand. The short segments created by the multiple primers in the lagging strand are called the Okazaki fragments. When the two original strands are connected to their own complementary strands, the replication of the DNA ends. Two new identical DNA molecules have been completed. This signals the termination of replication. During termination, an enzyme called DNA polymerase 1 proofreads the DNA molecule to avoid mismatch errors and removes the primers to be replaced by DNA nucleotide bases in a 3' to 5' direction. This action of the DNA polymerase 1 creates nicks or breaks that would make the DNA look segmented. After making sure that there are no errors in the replication process, ligase then seals the nicks or breaks that are left by the DNA polymerase 1. Replication now has made two identical DNA strands. The replication process is called semi-conservative because it retains the old or parent strand and makes use of the new daughter strand. To conclude this lesson, let us review the following key points. In DNA replication, the parental molecule unwinds and each strand then serves as a template for the synthesis of a new strand according to the base pairing rules. Initiation involves the unzipping of the DNA by helicase, separation of strands by the SSBP, and the adjustment of the replication bubble by the topoisomerase. Elongation involves the addition of a primer by primase and addition of nucleotide bases by the DNA polymerase 3. Termination involves proofreading by DNA polymerase 1 and removal of nicks by ligase. And lastly, DNA replication is semi-conservative. One double helix contains one old strand and one new strand. And that ends our discussion on DNA replication.